the things like Zoom bombing um, and just the way that um, queer and trans, black and brown people are treated on public spaces on the internet. Um, so safety hasn't been great, but that's always been a problem. It's not something new. Black trans people, um, black and brown trans people, non-binary people and queer people have been on the forefront fighting for these rights, but we're often um, demonized by these communities. Um, and we can't look towards um, white LGBT groups to support us because we know that there is systemic racism and we can't, we historically can't rely on white people to liberate us. Black women were free, then everyone would be free. And I think that same thing today should apply to uh, black trans women and thinking about how catering to them um, as the most marginalized people in our community. And we're ultimately going to be catering to everyone else. My name is Anisha, my pronouns are she and they. I'm part of a collective called Polka Dot, um, which is a collective for queer, trans and intersex black people and people of colour in West London. I'm also an educator at the Black Curriculum, which is an organisation that's trying to teach black British history um, all year round. Polka Dot is um, a group that started early this year and we're basically trying to create safe spaces for um, queer trans and intersex black people and people of colour. Uh, we do community events, arts-based events and more recently we've taken our practice online and just doing loads of events virtually to try and keep the communities together. So generally I've been feeling quite withdrawn um, especially since we've all been in isolation and we haven't been able to see each other um, and show up for each other in the same ways. Um, in terms of safety, I'd say obviously seeing the impacts that COVID's had on black and brown communities and the way that's obviously impacting queer and trans people even more. Um, it's made a lot of people from our community feel quite unsafe going outside um, and even some of the online spaces haven't been safe. The things like Zoom bombing um, and just the way that um, queer and trans, black and brown people are treated on public spaces on the internet. Um, so safety hasn't been great, but that's always been a problem. It's not something new um, to COVID. So we've done a couple sessions with Polka Dot um, online. We've done some like Instagram takeovers and workshops with our communities. Um, but personally, I haven't engaged much with the mainstream LGBT sector because um, from experience trying to engage with it, I've realised that it is quite whitewashed and I don't find it accessible. Um, the same goes with funders. Um, a lot of funders will position things like charity as a form of white saviourism and don't actually engage with our communities in meaningful ways. Um, we usually get one-off payments, we don't get long-term sustainable funding um, and we need, yeah, we need long-term support that isn't just money as well. Although money is really important, um, we need the networks, we need physical spaces, we need um, all these other things that are gatekept from our communities. Um, usually funding expects you to go by a certain route and do things the way they want you to do it, which often isn't um, isn't going to be best for our communities because we know how to support ourselves. And if we were given the right resources um, and enough money, we'd be able to do that sustainably. 
I think that our communities should um, receive funding in meaningful ways, especially in ways that engage with our communities and listen to our needs. Um, and don't prioritize what they think is best for our community over ourselves, um, which happens a lot. So I think if our communities were given the right resources, we'd be able to sustainably support ourselves um, long term. I prefer um, using, I personally prefer using brown and queer as these labels give me the freedom to express myself in various ways, but I know that even within the Asian community and other um, Black and POC communities, people identify in different ways that um, we need to respect that and listen to how people want to identify themselves. I think it's really important that we all um, aren't just allies but co-conspirators in Black liberation. Um, we should understand that Black people have fought for many the rights and freedoms that we all have um, and black people are usually on the um, the last to re receive the benefits of those things that they've been on the forefront fighting for so it's definitely time that um, we all support the movement and do what we can. I think it's difficult when um, Black trans people, um, black and brown trans people, non-binary people and queer people have been on the forefront fighting for these rights, but we're often um, demonized by these communities. Um, and we can't look towards um, white LGBT groups to support us because we know that there is systemic racism and we can't, we historically can't rely on white people to liberate us. Um, so, I, yeah, it's a difficult question, but um, I think we need to just make more space, especially um, within black and brown spaces to ensure that we're always um, pushing a queer, trans and uh, gender non-conforming voices to the forefront because we can all benefit by looking through these lenses. It's not just um, queer and trans people who benefit from these perspectives, it's everyone. Um, leaning on my friends and close circle has been um, a really important element to get me through lockdown. Um, that's something that we really prioritize and center at Polkadot. Um, it's maintaining and sustaining our own mental health and well-being. Um, so during lockdown we had people take over our instagram stories and one of the um people was this really amazing therapist and artist called obi and um in their takeover they talked about the amygdala and the fight or flight response and how we can we need to be using um rest practices to soothe our mind um and it's it's not just like, um, I know like self-care has become a buzzword, but it's so important that we um, make sure we're ma maintaining our mental health, um, especially using healthy um, rest practices. So one thing that they've put together is um, something called Black Bedtime Stories, um, where they'll, on their Instagram, um, do, go on Instagram live and do a, um, a bedtime reading um, to basically encourage people to um, take time to rest and take time to care for themselves. I think for us, um, obviously it's accepting that not everyone's going to be online. Um, that's a huge barrier. Some people also feel very exhausted and fatigued. Um, that's not just some people, most people online especially how much people would have been online during the pandemic have been experiencing quite extreme fatigue and burnout and that's I guess why we're trying to prioritize rest and um, community care a lot because you can sort of get drowned out in the amount of information and things that are being shared online and there needs to be a level of openness and honesty 
if people are feeling burnt out, um, if their emotions are, um, yeah, they, people should just feel like they can be honest about their emotions and that will be heard um, and people, they'll have someone there to comfort them and remind them that it's okay to take time off, you can take do what you need to do. Um, something else that we've become really aware of is the use of trigger warnings. I guess on social media people are constantly being bombarded with information, especially around the Black Lives Matter movement when it was at its peak um, in June. There was so much um, just information about like black mortality and things that would have been very triggering for a lot, for a lot of people. Um, so what we're trying to do is just encourage people to use like content warnings. So if people um, see or hear um, some information, they can basically consent before that if they want to hear that and opt out if, it, if they're not in the right mental space to be able to listen to that information. So pride to me means community and having a community that I can um, be my full authentic self in. Um, in the future, I'd say it means knowing myself because I feel like I don't completely know myself right now. Um, like knowing my history, um, my position in this world. Um, I feel like I have so much to learn about the history of my the various communities that I'm in. And I feel like in the future, that's something that I will know. Within my community, there are people of different faiths, genders, skin tones, um, sexualities, and levels of ability. And I think only by catering to all these different identities, um, we're able to like respect each other's full humanity. And that's what makes our community so great. So for me, I'd say, um, speaking to elders in the community. Um, I know that I'm not gonna find a history that I can relate to in a lot of books or in popular mainstream media, um, but something we, should, we shouldn't take for granted is the elders in our community who have these oral histories um, and the hardest bit about that is finding them.